what's up guys it is august 31st 2022 and i have to tell you man i've been down for a couple weeks um i've actually had covid for the past two weeks i've been just kind of bedridden and i've had to call in work i'm just starting to get back to normal and kind of feel uh like motivated to get back out and do some stuff um it's been uh, a real struggle though guys i mean this thing is no joke anyway this is the last chance i'm going to get i think with this new moon phase um i actually did gather some data on the wizard nebula and it turned out really good and I think I figured out a couple new tricks in processing to kind of make your astrophotography pop a little bit better. So um, that's what this video is going to be all about. Um, the target I've chosen for tonight is the Western Veil Nebula, and it is part of the Cygnus Loop. It consists mainly of hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen-3 gas. Using the L-Extreme Duo Narrowband filter here, I'll be able to really... Uh, isolate those gases and make them stand out a little bit from the background and this new technique will allow me to shrink some of the stars and really make the the nebula itself just kind of stand out a lot more so i'm using the Zenostar star 81 apo refractor uh, this is the doublet and that just means that there's two lens elements in here to uh, kind of help with chromatic aberrations and false colors and all that um, i have the 50 millimeter uh, mini Orion guide scope on the top and the ASI 120mm mini guide camera uh, riding inside of there and I have a 0.8 times reducer paired with the ASI 183 MC Pro one shot color astronomy camera. Everything's riding on the EQ6R Pro mount and will be controlled via the ASI Air Pro. I'll be able to basically sit inside and just kind of monitor everything from in there and hopefully uh, you guys will get something out of this video and we'll get a cool image of the Western Veil Nebula. So yeah, let's do it. Capturing the Veil Nebula requires a lot of patience and a specific image processing approach. It resides in uh, basically a countless sea of stars that really must be processed just right before the Western Veil Nebula will really uh, pop out from the background. This supernova remnant is believed to be uh, produced over 5,000 years ago and the Cygnus Loop contains the Western Veil Nebula and additional uh, targets all around the same area and they're all made up of the same kind of gases. I actually got a chance to view this target visually at this year's StarQuest Star Party at Green Bank, West Virginia through a 22-inch Dobsonian telescope and it was truly breathtaking guys. Instantly became one of my favorite nebula to uh, to view through an eyepiece. Under the right conditions you can really uh, follow the tendrils from one end to the other. It was a really special experience and if you guys ever get a chance to see it I definitely recommend it. The Western Veil Nebula is an expanding cloud born from the death explosion of a massive star and Cataloged as NGC 6960 or Caldwell 34, this target is often referred to as the Witch's Broom. This target was actually made famous by the Hubble Space Telescope. I'm sure you guys have seen an image of this target before. Fully uh, using this narrowband filter, we can really isolate those gases. I can show you this little trick that I learned in Photoshop to really tame those stars. It'll be a pretty interesting night here in the backyard photographing the Western Veil Nebula. been over a year since I photographed this target and I never really gave it the attention it deserves. But that's what I love about astrophotography. I'm able to come back and try again, adding things I learned along the way. After seeing the final results of all my hard work, it makes me really appreciate what I'm looking at even more. Understanding how an image is produced keeps me coming back for more and I don't think that's ever going to change. Man, this thing looks incredible. Ah, oh, it's been so long since I shot this thing. But you can see I'm doing 300 second exposures. Um, I'm cooled down to negative 15 degrees Celsius and I'm shooting at gain 111, which is basically, I would say it's like ISO 800 or ISO 1600, I'm not really sure, but man, look at that thing. It's kind of upside down right now, but it's all right. We can rotate it when we're done. But man, look at that signal, that is great. 
So if we do an auto kind of stretch here, just to show you, it'll make it pop a little more. Okay, and then we're gonna move this one. There we go. You can see all the green oxygen gas and the hydrogen alpha there. Just these little tendrils going all the way down. It's incredible. This filter rocks. Um, yeah, looks pretty darn good. But I have it set on 85, 300 second exposures and that should take me all the way to about 5.30 in the morning. So we got a meridian flip happening in one hour, 28 minutes. So yeah, we can just let this thing roll for the next hour and a half and I'll come back out and check it at the meridian flip. And I'm excited. It feels so good to be back outside and gathering data and and yeah, we'll see what we can get. What's up guys, it's the next night and yes, I got a haircut today and yes, it feels weird. Damn. Typically I don't go this short, but I was able to gather 85 300 second exposures last night on the Western Veil Nebula and super excited. The data looks great and yeah, I'm just going to keep rolling with it tonight. It was clear tonight. I set 65 300 second exposures tonight. Hopefully that'll be enough data to really give us a good strong signal and give us an awesome image. So might stick around. Uh, Jupiter's at opposition tonight. I think tonight or last night. So. I'm just going to take a look at it over there and yeah, just get some sleep, so. So after two nights of imaging, I was able to collect 135 five minute exposures on the Western Veil Nebula. Ended up stacking 105 total with darks flats and dark flats using Astro Pixel Processor. This is not going to be a full in-depth processing tutorial, but rather just a few tricks or tips to uh, make your astro photography pop and help your target stand out a little better from the background. I will leave a link in the description for all the raw data files if anybody wants to download and process them yourselves or or if you just want to follow along, feel free to do so. You will need Photoshop and StarNet version two if you're wanting to follow along. StarNet is a free software you can download that will subtract uh, the stars from your astrophotography images and you're left with just the target without all of the uh, big bright distracting stars. Why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes a nebula or galaxy is surrounded in a sea of stars and the stars can actually become distracting and take away from some of the beauty of these interstellar gas clouds or galaxies. I will also leave a link in the description for the StarNet version two download. And if you're using a Mac by chance, my man, Mr. Dave Green actually posted a video on the channel, how to download and install StarNet version two on a Mac with the line commands. Great video. Uh, I will leave a link in the description for that video as well or you can click on the screen somewhere here but yeah let's go ahead and jump on the computer and we'll get started all right guys here we are in the computer and I'm gonna open up Photoshop here the way that I uh, use StarNet is more towards the end of my workflow um, people do it all different ways this is just my way and it works for me but it's not the right way or the correct way. Um, it's just the way I do it. I just kind of wanted to point that out. But the way I do use it, um, it's a very subtle way that has a huge impact on my final image. So what I have opened here inside of Photoshop is a unstretched version. I have a stretched completed version over here and 
I have my starless version over here from StarNet. So basically the way I do my workflow, I just use curves and levels uh, back and forth um, to kind of brighten the image and I get it to a point where I'm happy with the overall brightness of the image. And once I have it completely stretched and everything, um, here is my final image. I could probably go a little brighter, but I want to keep these stars kind of uh, small, so I'm not really going to stretch it anymore. Go up here to File and Save As, and save on your computer, and wherever you have your StarNet folder, mine's here on my desktop, and click on it, and you just want to save it inside of here, which I have here, Western Veil vale 2022 stretched, so reopen that folder you find which is right here my western veil vale, stretched and you would just click and you drag it over top of this little uh, sn symbol here and it will automatically start and this is where version 2 really comes in handy it's a lot faster and it does a lot better job so this takes about two or three minutes to finish and then we're going to file, we're going to open, and we find our StarNet folder again. And we want to open that up. All right, and we can see that StarNet didn't do the a perfect job. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make a copy of this layer. And I'm going to go over here to my spot healing tool. And we're just going to zoom in. And we're going to click on these little artifacts that StarNet left over. And you can see they just disappear. So I do like to take my time and go around um, just deleting any kind of artifacts that I see. Alright, we're left with this big nasty thing here. So, I'm going to try see what I can do with it. Sometimes you just can't get rid of the, the halos. I think it's caused from my filter. Oh, that gas wasn't there. And this is where you really want to pay attention and you don't want to really delete any of the gas or anything like that. But I'm just kind of rushing here. And, but for the sake of this tutorial I think it's good so what we're gonna do go ahead and hit layer and we're gonna flatten the image here and we're gonna go back to our stretched star version and we're gonna hold down control and hit a to select everything we're gonna hold down control and hit C to copy it we're gonna go back over to our starless version and we're gonna control V and we're gonna paste it right on top there and we're gonna change our blending mode here to pin light. That will only allow the brightest stars uh, to shine through, but you can see it kind of makes the stars look uh, worse. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna shift click both layers and we're gonna merge these layers together. And now we're gonna control A to select everything, control C to copy it and we're going to jump back over to our star version and we're going to control V and paste it right on top there and only this time we're going to zoom in and we're going to lower our opacity to 50% we can maybe go to like 55% anywhere from 50 to 65% would probably be okay and you can see the before and after there's the before, here's the after, and it really just shrank a lot of those stars and makes the nebula stand out a little better. So what we can do now, we're going to shift click these layers and we're going to merge these. And now control A to select everything again, control C to copy, jump back to your starless version. And we're going to go up in here to our history tab and we're going to go back up to where we have no artifacts. We're going to control V and we're going to paste that right on top. So right underneath it here we have our starless version with no artifacts. 
and then on top we have our star version so what we're going to do now this is where the trick comes in we're going to choose our layer mask here we're going to change our blending mode to lighten if we zoom in here choose our paintbrush make sure black is selected here we can just click on these stars and they disappear so now we have the ability to go around and we can pick and choose which stars that we want to keep in our image so what I like to do is just go around and I delete all the really big distracting stars that are kind of right in right on top of the nebula you can see here we can just get rid of them you can see uh, how much of an impact this can have you can really uh, use this to your advantage um, there's a lot of targets like this that are just uh, kind of lost in a sea of stars so this is just um, a really great way to really uh, have full control over which stars you want to keep in your image and which ones you want to get rid of and it's just really fun and this is going to be all subjective um, like I said this isn't the right way or the correct way this is just the way that I like to do it and probably go overboard with this um, but I think it's a good way to uh, delete the stars out of your images without actually deleting all the stars from the background. It just adds kind of a, a pop to your image and makes it stand out a little more than what you uh, typically see. So just thought that was worth sharing and you can see we can just go over here and just get rid of all these big ones. you can see how this could be get really fun and it's a neat little trick and I just thought you guys would uh, appreciate it so I'll probably start doing this on mostly all of my images and now the nebula looks like it's uh, kind of in front of the stars there's no stars blocking it so it gives it a real uh, three-dimensional kind of look um, but you can just kind of go through get rid of whatever ones you don't want I just thought that was really cool but yeah that's all i really got for this one guys um hopefully you guys got something out of this video i know it was kind of all over the place but um if you made it this far i thank you for tuning in and that's all i got for this one again check out the raw data if you guys want um all the links will be in the description below and see you in the next one guys peace